So good afternoon everyone and welcome to the first in this series of lectures that I've decided to do because the way the situations are now I just want to try and provide something that is supplemental to the learning that your teachers have given you. So this is not intended to completely replace the uh, stuff that your teachers have been giving you but for some of the harder topics such as respiration, photosynthesis, I'm going to do my best to try and help you to further understand it in a way that I was able to learn because you know I got a H1 and it's literally just about trying to figure out what different methods of learning and trying to solidify the topics that are harder because these are the ones that are going to bring you up from you know the intermediate grades to some of the higher grades so what exactly is respiration so respiration is the release of energy by breaking down food and this process occurs in a series of enzyme controlled reactions. So basically the thing that I kind of find is that a lot of people, when you're talking about this, it's like, oh, respiration, but they don't actually try and get into their head what this actually means. So if you think about any food that you eat and take in, you'll there's a, there's, that's going to eventually get broken down to a sugar which commonly in this case respiration we talk about glucose because that's a single sugar so this single sugar is broken down by a series of these enzyme controlled reactions because enzymes control all these different processes within the body therefore it's temperature dependent and at the same time then so basically we're using this to break down these substrates to produce energy because if you, as the food that you take in, it's not usable in that form. It has to get broken down, and then eventually it gets to a point where we have released all these different energy molecules, and the energy is used for our other external processes. So don't confuse the people confuse respiration with photosynthesis all the time. So this respiration is a catabolic process. What does that mean? That means that you're starting with a larger molecule. You're breaking that larger molecule down into smaller molecules and you're releasing energy. You're taking energy from that, break it down. Whereas where an anabolic process is whereas you have all these different smaller molecules and you're going to combine them together and there you're going to use energy to create that mo larger molecule. So ATP then, this is where it starts to get confusing for a lot of people because it's very difficult to try and visualize in your head where this is going on. So ATP is essentially the energy currency of the cell and it's the immediate source of energy in all cells. But what, do, what does that mean? So adenosine triphosphate is just, it happens to be this particular molecule that can be built up and broken down very easily. And when you break uh, something down, like I said before, you're going to release some energy or when you're going to build something up you're going to use the energy so ATP stores this energy but for very short periods so we can't actually store ATP in great quantities what we can store ADP so adenosine diphosphate and the correlation between these two is essentially that ADP has two phosphate molecules we can tell that from the name whereas adenosine triphosphate has three so ATP is made from adenine, ribose and 3-phosphate sugars and all this excess energy that I've been talking about is stored in the phosphate bonds and it's usually the end phosphate that kind of has an unstable bond due to its high energy. So what the body does is it splits that end phosphate off and that energy is then released whereas then we can use the energy released from that for our different processes. Whereas here, in this respiration process, we're trying to make ATP, and we do that from ADP. So there's a lot going on there, and people try and, you know, it gets very confusing for people. So just be careful in the terminology and what they mean. And you can actually be asked the definition of either of these, as in what do the, what does it stand for? Because usually it'll just be given ATP, ADP, so just remember that ATP is adenosine triphosphate and ADP is adenosine diphosphate. So then we have our ATP equation. So this is just basically how the ATP is, like I was saying, how it's made and then how it's broken down again. So 
We our starting point is with our adenosine diphosphate and the addition of a phosphate. But for them to bind together, we're going to need energy to make that reaction happen. So ADP plus P, given a source of energy, will make ATP. And then conversely, ATP, if we release the energy, we're going to get ADP and a singular phosphate as well. So does that make sense? So that's basically what I've been trying to say, but in diagrammatic form in summary. Then we have different types of respiration. So we have aerobic respiration and we have anaerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is the release of energy that requires oxygen. So it needs oxygen for it to occur. The substrate, aka the, what's, what it, the initial thing that's put in that's being broken down, is completely broken down. So at the end point, it's completely used up. There is no more of that substance left. Whereas with anaerobic respiration, it's not completely broken down and there is some of it left at the end. So the equation for aerobic respiration is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. What does that mean? That is C6H12O6 is glucose. That's just the chemical formula for glucose. O2 is oxygen, we know that. CO2 is carbon dioxide and H2O is water. What do the sixes at the beginning mean? So we're to the left of that arrow and to the right of that arrow. In chemistry, it has to balance. So if we look, we've got C6 on the left hand side. So it's got to have six carbons on the left. So therefore, it's got to have six carbons on the right. So therefore, the only molecule that has carbon in it is CO2. So therefore, we have to put the six in front of the CO2. And then from there, we try and balance everything else. We try and balance the oxygens and then the hydrogens. Makes sense. Whereas in anaerobic respiration, we, have, we talk about generally these two different formulae where we have C6H12O6, same as before. So our starting point is glucose, except it's not being completely broken down, so we're getting ethanol and carbon dioxide. That's in yeast alcohol fermentation. And then the other one where we get two lactic acid, that's usually in human muscle cells after they go through a period of low oxygen levels and then they have to start respiring without oxygen and produce lactic acid. Then, so this is where it gets really tough because it's the biochemistry of it all. So what does that actually mean? Basically, this is bringing the theory that I've just talked about into the process of respiration and how it actually works. So the top line in blue is the equation for aerobic respiration because we're going to go the full way in this one. I've divided it then. So we have glucose is converted to pyruvic acid. So this that top part is the incomplete respiration because it's anaerobic and underneath that line then is aerobic so that line is the end point for anaerobic respiration and then beyond that is what would happen in the presence of oxygen when the pyruvic acid is passed into the mitochondria and all these different reactions occur so if you look at this it's very intimidating in isolation but that's why we should always break it down into its different constituents and try and understand what's going on so if we look at stage one glycolysis in isolation so when glucose which is a six carbon molecule we know that from our formula c6h12o6 enters the cell this is the first form of respiration that will occur so glycolysis or glycolysis Anything glyco means that it's to do with glucose and lysis means split, which makes sense. So if you look at your glucose, that's a six carbon molecule, that's going to get broken down into pyruvic acid, which is the three carbon molecule. So you're essentially splitting it in half. And the thing is, is that if you think about it, we're going to get two of those pyruvic acids. You know, if you try and keep along in your head what's actually going on. This occurs in the cytoplasm, but specifically in the cytosol. See, I have cytoplasm written on the left, but specifically it's the cytosol. So if you get asked a question about where exactly does glycolysis occur in the cell, it's in the cytosol, which is essentially the liquid part of the cytoplasm, taking away all of the different um, membrane bound organelles. And importantly, this happens without oxygen. So this is an anaerobic process. 
And like I said before, so glucose does not completely get broken down. It instead forms an intermediate. So we call it an intermediate because it's something that's made within the middle. Like it's not the end product normally unless there is no oxygen present. So this is the anaerobic process. And the important thing as well is that it's only a small amount of energy that's released. And we're going from glucose, which is a six carbon molecule, to pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule. And our net ATP gain is plus two, because if you think about it, we're going from glucose to pyruvic acid each time, we're breaking it off and making an ATP, but we're going to make two pyruvic acids from one glucose. So therefore we have plus two ATP. Then stage two, Krebs cycle. So this is what would happen if oxygen is present. The pyruvic acid will pass into the mitochondria from the cytosol, and then all these different reactions will start to occur. So we're going from pyruvic acid, which is a three carbon molecule, to a molecule called acetyl coenzyme A, which is a two carbon molecule. How do we go from there? We lose a carbon dioxide. So naturally we're losing one carbon atom, which makes sense. So this acetyl coenzyme A is then passed around this series of reactions called Krebs cycle. Thankfully, in the leaving cert, we don't actually have to know what all these different reactions are. And we just have to talk about acetyl coenzyme A getting passed around this cycle and then the end products. So acetyl coenzyme A is passed around and we're going to lose some CO2. So that means we're just losing another carbon molecule and we're going to make ATP. So we're making more energy and we're going to lose two pairs of or one pair of hydrogen atoms. So what does that mean? So if we're losing a pair of hydrogen atoms, then what we have is two H pluses and two E minuses. So two H pluses are just protons and two E minuses are electrons. And that's important for the next stage. So we have another energy carrier molecule called NAD plus. So it acts in a similar way to ATP, except specifically it's going to carry these high energy electrons rather than energy in the form of the phosphate bonds like with ATP. So NAD plus or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, I'm going to talk about that soon, is going to bind with these two electrons and two protons and they're going to get NADH and an extra H plus. So that's, I have the formula written down there. So the key thing is that we're adding these electrons to this NAD, NAD plus and we're going to get NADH and that NADH then is passed into the next part of stage two. So in the electron transport chain then is the second part of stage two. So the NADH is going to donate its electrons that it had been given in the previous reaction to these electron carrier molecules. So basically these high energy electrons will pass along these electron carrier molecules and at each time it jumps from one to another, it's going to give out some energy, which is ATP. So if you can imagine that there's a lot of these energy carriers, we're going to get a lot of ATP production as they pass along each one. And then because we're donating two electrons as well, it's doubled. So this really is the bulk of where all the ATP is made in aerobic respiration. And then once these electrons have passed along all these electron carrier molecules and they're used up, then what happens is these electrons pass along, they bind with oxygen, they bind with the reserve proton from earlier and they make water. So that's where we get water in our formula from before. Then, like I alluded to before, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, so it has a role in trapping and transferring electrons and hydrogen ions. So at key steps, two hydrogen atoms are removed from the substrate and each pair consists of two H plus and two E minus. Each NADH molecule has stored energy that is used to make ATP. NADH passes its high energy 2E- along the electron transport chain to eventually bind with O2 and H plus to make H2O. And NAD plus is then made again reused. So this is basically just the summary of what I was talking about with NAD and NADH. And you have to know the what NAD stands for, just like with ATP. So then in summary, the best way I think of summarizing anything is to ask this if you can answer these questions you basically understand everything that i've just said and the number the years that i have in brackets are when they were asked in the leaving certain when they came up 
So what is the first stage, pro first stage process of respiration called? It's stage one, glycolysis. And then the first stage ends with pyruvate formation in anaerobic organisms, what, uh, what is produce, produced from pyruvate. Number one, in muscle cells, so we get lactic acid. Number two, we, in yeast cells, so we get ethanol and carbon dioxide. We get two products in the yeast cell. Where in the cell does glycolysis take place? In the cytosol. To what substance is glucose normally converted in the first stage of respiration? We have pyruvate or pyruvic acid, you can call it either of those two. Write a balanced equation for aerobic respiration. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 will give 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. Where in the cell does the second stage of respiration take place? It takes place in the mitochondria. Name the sec two carbon molecule that is passed through Krebs cycle. That is, excuse me, acetyl coenzyme A. And then what does NAD stand for? Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide.